Hey everyone, Brent Cook here, playing the Epic Storm, and with me tonight, Alex McKinley. Alex, how's it going? Going pretty well. Uh, I'm excited. Me Play too. More me too. So, Alex, in front of us we have the brand new version of the Epic Storm, version 12.9. We've talked about this a little bit privately. We work together on decklists all the time. Last week, this decklist had a grape shot in it. This week, grape shot's not here. What happened? Yeah, so I think last week we both expected there to be a lot of storm in the metagame. It's it's just been a trend recently that ten percent of these challenges have been storm. And like you can you can beat the mirror without uh, the the mirror meaning both ant and tes. But you, you can meet the mirror without Grape Shot. It just makes it so much easier. Uh, and it, it felt like it was worth it, especially given the slot, which is the fourth carpet. What, how much equity was that slot really giving us, Brian? Not a whole lot. So with our boarding plan versus both Delver and Control, we were taking out four copies of Ponder, and then we were taking out an engine. So against Control decks, you would board out Echo of Aeons, and then after that, you would take out a Chromox, a Mox Opal, and a Rite of Flame. That's a lot of cards, but then again, we had four copies of Carpet of Flowers coming in. We had three copies of Galvanic Relay. I'm sorry, two copies of Galvanic Relay, and then two copies of Abrupt Decay coming in. So there's a lot of cards coming in. But what really irked me about this was the fact that we were boarding out a Rite of Flame, a card that was completely fine in that matchup when we have three car or three copies of galvanic relay in our main deck and then against delver we were boarding on a mox opal which is also just fine in that matchup so it didn't really make a whole lot of sense yeah it was it was kind of a marginal upgrade an upgrade still but definitely kind of marginal marginal especially as these beta games started to diversify despite delver being you know the best deck by a country mile very uh, true and since then, we've seen a couple more iterations of the metagame, and I think that on any given weekend, we could expect something different. And rather than having six or seven different deckless versions that are all one card off that's the same slot, we're just going to call this 12-9, which is the sideboard with a flex spot. Exactly. So this week, we are playing Pulverize in the flex spot. So the easiest way to think about 12.9 is that it's 74 cards plus a flex. Uh, Pulverize makes a lot of sense due to the rise in Moon Stompy over the last few weeks. It top aided the Showcase Challenge, won a Saturday Challenge. It's just been very, very popular all over the place, especially in leagues. Chalice decks have been all over leagues, and we're playing a league tonight, so we're definitely interested in the Pulverize. Yeah, so that slot could be a lot of things, uh, depending on the metagame. It could go back to Carpet 4, it could be the Grape Shot, it could be a Massacre. Uh, uh, Slots like that are definitely useful depending on what one could expect for a metagame. Yeah, and rather than try to track a bunch of small metagame shifts, we're going to try to just measure how effective Carpet 4 really is in that spot compared to something else. So 12.8, we have the data on Carpet 4. Now we're trying to gain, gain data on how much does 3 Carpet really matter. Yeah. Uh, let us know in the comments. Is is this a deckless naming style that makes sense? Uh, should should we just have a different deckless number for every single possible variation of that slot? You know, I, I think this this uh, flex slot approach works, but I'd be inclined to agree with you. So, Alex, is there any other change thought, whatever, that you're thinking about with the Epic Storm right now? No, I think TS is incredibly well positioned, especially with the rise of Jeskai control. Uh, to e almost equal the metagame share of Delver. I've always felt that our control matchup is even better than our Delver matchup most of the time, uh, despite them having Prismatic Ending uh, to answer carpets, but they just don't clock you as quickly, and I, I feel advantaged the later the game goes. I would definitely agree with you there. And having access to something like Abrupt Decay means that you don't get locked out by Deafening Silence or Aether Sworn Canonist, things like that. This is such a useful tool in those matchups. I just I can't emphasize that enough. All right, so I don't have any other further comments. I don't know if you do, Alex, but if you don't, we can hop on into the first match. Yeah, let's get playing Magic. All right, we will see you there. 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. That said, there's no better way of showing your support than becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks, and we get to keep making combo content. The perks get better and better each level you go up. They also stack. To start off, with our Storm Fan tier, you unlock our private member section of our Discord, which comes with a highlighted user profile and then some awesome badges and emotes for YouTube. Looking for a cyborg help? Become a Stormtrooper, our middle tier, for two cyborg guides of your deck choice every single month, on top of 50% off donation decks. Did we mention you also get 10% off merchandise from our shop? With our top tier, the Combo Cabal, you get a free donation deck every single month, 15% off merchandise from our shop, early access to private deck lists, and the most valuable perk in my opinion, videos early. That's right, you heard it, early access to all videos. But maybe sweet perk, secret deck list, early access to videos isn't for you, but you'd still like to show your appreciation. Make sure to check out theepicstorm.com slash shop for card singles and storm swag. Please don't forget to use your membership discounts. Finally, if you want to see your combo deck here on this very YouTube channel, make sure to visit theepicstorm.com slash donation decks, where all you have to do is attach your TXT file and pick a donation tier. With our epic tier, you can even join me in a video to showcase your bold brew in person and explain the ins and outs of your strategy. Card availability won't be an issue due to our new sponsor, Card Hoarder. With Card Hoarder, renting is super easy. If you're looking to get into Magic Online, Line, there isn't a better, more affordable solution than Card Hoarder. Fun fact, you can rent the Epic Storm for 7 tickets a week, which is just a great deal. There are many ways you can support us, just pick whatever is best for you. In the meantime, let's play some Magic. Match number 1, I'm here with Alex McKinley. We're on the play, we have no clue what our opponent's playing, absolutely none. And here we've opened up a pretty interesting hand. So Alex, we have Metalcraft. We have a pair of Lotus Petals in this Mox Opal, and then we have Defense Grid. No real land. Uh, what do you think of something like this against a blind, unknown opponent? I, I would be inclined to keep this hand in the blind, I think. I don't know if I would cast the Brainstorm on one, but I would definitely play out our artifacts. Um, so like this hand can go very, very fast, obviously, but it also has protection in the form of the Defense Grid. So I, I think this is this is a fine keep, especially in the blind. I'm inclined to agree with you. Sometimes players get a little bit too uh, uneasy about not having a card that says land on it, but this Mox Opal is just as good. So that's at yeah. least how I feel. All right. And it felt a little bit like our opponent was uh, using the F6 key there. So I don't know if we'll be needing this defense grid. That's okay. We can just put it away with this brainstorm because brainstorm is pretty powerful. Planes in this economy? On. Mother runes planes on 60 cards. Okay. All right. So we're going to take a draw here. We've already wasted three storm. Hi, oh. All right. All right. Brainstorm. Okay. Uh, so we can definitely so check this away. grid. Um, if we put back the volcanic island, we have one plus five, six. So we can empty for 12. I'm sorry, for 14. Oh, I don't think we really have any. They have any. They have any. They have any. They have their options because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we're so we're a mana short of pier. So I think empty is our only play because our opponent could have Thalia next turn. So I would I would uh invite the Warrens to the party. It's so weird hearing Alex say that. So Alex uh does not like our goblin friends. I'm just gonna throw that out there. And a few months ago, Alex was all about possibly cutting the Warrens. Uh, I don't think that that's a, a slot that could go. But it, it, it's shocking how often you end up at 8 mana exactly uh, instead of 9. Like, yeah. I don't know what it is, but half the time I count my hand, I'm like, I have 8 mana, why can't this be 9? It's just that extra card to, to develop a mana. Yeah, so there was one card that our opponent could have played here, and I say could have because they conceded which would have given them some game, and that would have been turn two Stoneforge Mystic and a Batter Skull. Batter Skull is a card that not all lists are playing these days. Some, I mean, most still have it, but there's only so many cards you can play with 60 card lists, and Culture Complete is very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so Alex, uh, I'm not afraid to say that I think Veil of Summer in this matchup is straight doo-doo. Uh, I hope you're okay with me using that kind of language here, but I think we need to get this card out of our deck. What cards would you yeah. be boarding in instead? So we're going to bring in the Decays and the Chain of Vapors to remove all the lock pieces. And I think I have a different opinion about how Galvanic Relay plays in this matchup, but Brian's piloting, so... Because <laughs> I, uh, I believe that... Uh, Galvanic Relay and Veil of Summer in this matchup are about as useful as each other, and one of them hurts more off of Ad Nauseam, so. That is a reasonable opinion to have, but I'm also of the opinion that there will be some number of games where you cast a turn one Echo of Aeons into a Galvanic Relay for like 13, and in those games I'd rather have Galvanic Relay in my deck, which imprints for red on a Chrome Mox, than a Veil of Summer. Um... But it's like we're arguing over like less than a percent. Like it doesn't really matter all that much. Um, it's just semantics. How do you feel about this card in the matchup, Alex? I love Defense Grade versus Death and Taxes, which definitely was not true many years ago. Uh, the, these Death and Taxes players have all these like free blue, blue, blue cards in their, 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 their sideboard that I just want to make them more expensive, you know? It's, it's a little bit of taxing back and forth. All right, so let's hit submit. It's <laughs> me, or if it was your audio all, all together. But Alex was talking about Mind Break Trap there, so if Alex's audio cut out for you as well, it might have just been for me. Uh, Alex was joking about making Mind Break Trap more expensive, so that's the reason I have Defense Crit in there. Yep. All right, so Alex, uh, here we've opened up the classic. We have 34% every single draw step to hit hand would you keep this no i agree. certainly not as a seven uh in this london mulligan economy so one of the things about the 34 percent rule that we talk about a lot in the, in the matchup mulligans is that you are 33 or 34 percent to hit with every draw step but that's only good for how many draw steps you have in a matchup like death and taxes where they have deafening silence or thalia that window closes very very quickly so you get one draw step at 34 percent or you can just london mole so it's just so much better. <laughs> hey speaking of that echo of aeons card keep yeah i am putting this brainstorm right on the bottom of our library i want to keep the abrupt decay in case our opponent does have something scary on turn one that we do need to answer uh, and our opponent's going to three already so they, they're they're looking for something all right so they kept three cards planes into deafening silence so we have the well, answer to that already draw okay we have to play out lotus petal here we don't really have a choice and then we're going to pass the turn one has one card yeah. in hand about to go up to two this Wish Claw is actually not the worst draw. The wow! So, what I think here, and I could be wrong, we want to consider... That was a huge draw for the opponent. Yeah. It's either the second land or the Thalia itself. Yeah, I think we just let this happen take a draw step. Yeah, so the reason that we're not killing the Thalia is because we could have made a, a third mana here and uh, decayed the Thalia and given us a ton of time to find another answer for Deafening Silence. I think I, think I would have almost preferred to just decay the Deafening Silence because we, we are allowed to try to go off through a uh, Thalia. We could have cast Echo Beyonds at four mana, which is not great, but it gives us options if we get desperate. All right, so now they have three mana. It's kind of uh, odd that we haven't drawn a card to imprint yet. It's not the norm, that's for sure. Recruiter of the guard, wow. We're going to lose to Mulligan right. three. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that assumes that they have something to go Recruiter for here that isn't just another Thalia. So there's a couple cards I have in mind. Uh, so they picked up Canonist, but then okay. there's also something like uh, Prelate. Oh, even though Prelate's fallen out of favor, and wow, we are getting pretty unlucky here. Uh, yeah. Jeez. So it's looking grim. 
Yeah, there's definitely a world where our opponent could have found Spear of the Labyrinth as well. That would have been pretty devastating for us. So I, one of the yeah. things about Spirit is we could still hypothetically just beat Spirit of the Labyrinth, where Canonist is a lot more difficult to beat. Yeah, so now we actually just need to find three answers, and we just Way too are out of time. That. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to just pass here. We're technically not out of time. Like Alex mentioned, we can beat Athalia. It's just incredibly difficult. So I think now we need to look at blowing up Canonist instead of the Thalia. Um, let's tap uh -huh. this. Yeah, it's free to play the Opal here because we get to untap with it next turn. And then also play a Wish Claw Talisman because I think the way we get out of this is we're going to use a Wish Claw Talisman to find a uh, Chain of Vapor. So what? I think we blow up Canonist here and we save a couple damage. How do you feel about that? Uh, so if we take three here, we get another turn and a draw step, but if we blow up the Deafening Silence, then we get to convert a Wishclaw into a Chain of Vapor next turn. Does that work? I think it does. It... So then we'd have to go off with the Thalia in play and hope to draw into a removal spell and, um, we'd have to draw into a removal spell and mana to win the game. Uh versus getting another draw step to find a second interaction spell, and then we're kind of in the same boat, right? Deafening Silence, and then we take five going to three, and then we untap, they pour it our land, we play Wishclaw Talisman for three, we can't actually use a Chain of Vapor. What do you mean? We just uh, crack an LED, then search, and then we bounce the... Uh, canonist, and then we cast Echo. That works, right? So, okay, I see what you're saying. So why wouldn't you blow yeah. up Canonist here? Oh no, because I, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, because okay. they're not the same effect. Because we can cast Claw into uh, um, Claw into Chain of Vapor because Wish Claw Talisman's an artifact. I see. It just took me a second. You're correct. Yeah, I think this gives us a better out. Uh, it's it's not great, but it's it's something. All right, so deafening silence goes. I mean, props to the opponent too. They're going oh, to be. I forgot to sack the pedal. That changes things, I think. So we actually have to draw a land here. Otherwise, we can't cast the call in the first place. Okay. So you're saying there's a chance. Yeah. I don't think it really matters. Um, okay. I didn't do the math all the way out, but we'll see what happens here. So we'll just add a bunch of blue. I think we end up with zero mana floating, so we actually can't beat Thalia. Yeah. That's unfortunate. So we would bounce the Canonist, and then uh, we're actually a mana short of flashing back Echo. Okay, so we're just done. All right, so we lost to a mulligan to three. Impressive on the opponent's part, but this match is not over. We do get a chance to come back. All right. Yeah, I think that it was still correct to... Well, I guess the port was on board at the points we had to decay the Canonist. That's, yeah, should have actually done the math. That's the problem there. I did point out uh, the port. We're... I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, you did. But it's fine. I forgot we just the pedal. <laughs> that, that was a lost game. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. We're going to come back stronger this game. We're going to be fine. We're on the play. All right. So we have Chromox to imprint to this relay. Um, on the first turn while having an abrupt decay in hand. Or we can London Mull. I don't know how you feel about this, Alex. This is a relay for four. Correct. And then we get to untap with one mana. Uh, or sorry, with two mana. Two and a half mana. Maybe three if we... F yeah. And we'd also need to flip a tutor because we're probably imprinting the Burning Wish. We could also imprint... No, we're not allowed to imprint the, imprint the Abrupt Decay because we have, to, we, have to, we, have to, we have to imprint the Wish to make red mana. So this this is really bad if they deafening silence us. True if you don't flip a land. Or we can just London Mall. 
Yeah, I think I would ship this. Look for something with a lion's eye diamond or something similar. So I think that these hands often are traps because they're just way too slow for the matchup. While they look like they're okay, this hand doesn't play meaningful magic in my opinion. Well, it doesn't play meaningful magic against uh, death and taxes. If this is a blue matchup, you can keep this hand all day long. But yeah, I agree. I would ship this as well and go to five. Uh, uh, actually, no, that doesn't work. Never mind. Um, so do we keep this? We can go turn one wish claw. We bottom trop right of flame and hope that our opponent doesn't have deafening silence. I think that's worth keeping. Yeah, I think that that's reasonable. There's only so many copies of that card they can possibly have. So, uh, should we keep trop instead of Volk? Yes, because of I guess it makes uh, later drawn right of flames uh, worse, but I think it's fine. Um, and then we can just float the black from the chrome box anyway. So, all right, let's see how the five goes. Opponents also on five cards here. Imprint and Wishclaw Talisman. Pass the turn. Basic planes. Vile. Not the right one drop here, Alex. Yep. Drop. That's not the one we're scared of. Oh, that's a dud. All right, so I, I think we spin the wheel here. Yep, I think that we are obligated to go and i think i would just use all the blue mana from the lion's eye diamond here and not tap our chrome mox to cast the echo i'll follow your lead i don't have strong opinions i think both are fine yeah Ugh. Ugh. all right that's obviously not great but we can play a couple of these out get some mana sources in play it does allow us to potentially beat heat a little bit easier you might be thinking about Lost Storm Count, but honestly, that's just not as important as being able to cast your spells. Yeah. That's rather unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. We're not out of it yet. Land number two into Thalia. I don't even have to wish claw for anything. Okay, let's take a draw here. Boo. So we could just play another Chrome Mox. I don't really have opinions on that. Um, uh, I think I would hold because the Ritual makes more mana in hand. And we already have plenty of mana in play. Like we have uh, five permanent mana sources in play. All right. So it's going to be tough. We whiffed on our draw seven, but we could just draw Ad Nauseum. And that gets us back in this. Yep. That Urza Saga is going to be a little bit brutal. Yeah. Okay, so now we're at 18. Recruiter of the Guard. All right. Things are looking a little more hairy for us, so now they can get a Canonist for this vial. Yep. I, I think we are done so. Right, that, that flex slot was the massacre. You know. That's true, we technically have a card. So we drew the Abrupt Decay, but our opponent now is a Canonist. We're still technically not out of this. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, like, the uh, going off through the Thalia at this point is definitely possible because we played out all of our mana sources. So, we are going to die very quickly to this Urza Saga. That is true. I plan on blowing up the Canonist this turn for what it's worth. Yeah, I think I agree just to save the life points. There's no reason to let it sit in play. First shot in port. What's going on here? Okay. We will cast the Abrupt Decay. Goodbye, Canonist. All right, so we're taking three going down to 15. I mean, things are certainly not looking good. I'm not going to pretend that we're in a good spot here, but it's still possible to win. Yeah. If we draw Brainstorm, then we could find Tutor plus uh, Removal Spell, and that definitely puts us back in the game. Another Recruiter of the Guard. Okay. 
Let's see what they have. Uh, these these sixty card death and taxes lists definitely don't have as many slots for uh, hate bears like the eighty card ones do. Spirit of the Labyrinth. That doesn't matter that much right now. Uh, it does hinder us later, but we have to get to a point where that card matters. Yeah, it does turn off Echo, Peer, and Brainstorm, which are not irrelevant. All right, so okay. we, we found Burning Wish, which shuts off Peer. I believe we can and actually Echo. we can empty at the moment. Um, we have enough resources to do that, but it's only eight goblins, so all that's going to do is buy time. But is buying time I, good enough? I don't think so. Well, how much time do we have? So they're going to make a... Oh, no, they're not going to... They're going to make a 3-3. Three, three, and then it's going to be 4-4. Four, four with the Urza Saga. Huh. So if we don't do anything this turn, next turn we're taking 7 damage, putting us to 8. So we get one more draw step. Regardless. Correct. And if we empty... And this is definitely the wrong tutor to get as well. I think we hold for a turn. Yeah, just making goblins, I think, just blows all of our resources, and then it just doesn't go anywhere anyway. I'm guessing that our opponent is going to grab a needle with this saga, and then... I imagine that they use Wish Claw, but I could be wrong. That's what I would do, is with this on the stack, is I would use the Claw to find something that matters, and then, like, perhaps a second copy of Thalia that they could put in if we answer the first one. Uh, and then this finds Needle. Raftiger's Cage. That card doesn't matter. Now they have, an, or they have a way of bouncing the Thalia with a Vial for two in play. I think we're pretty dead. It's possible. All right, so I at least want to take our draw and see what our points right. are here. Draw. Dead on board draw step says. Right of flame. So it's a break even for Thalia. So we can empty for 10, but all that does is buy time. I think that they got us here. And I'm I not going to waste any more time and concede, but I just want to point out that we were not dead several turns ago. We actually had a few draw steps here. Um, yeah. yeah, the mulligan to three was the uh, the difference maker. If they didn't hit... Yeah, what a brutal they, turn to Thalia. If they didn't hit the second land, I imagine that they kept planes, deafening silence, Thalia. If they didn't hit the second land, we actually had it teed up, but... Unfortunately, our draw seven in game three didn't get there. It happens. Alex, let's yeah. focus on getting the next one. Yeah. If you haven't joined them already, I would recommend opening up our description down below and joining our seven social media networks. They're each great in their own way, but I would strongly suggest joining our Discord server. In there, you will find others just like you looking to improve their storm game and grow as a combo community. If you're a member of our YouTube channel, you should sync your account to Discord to unlock our private member section that has the latest and greatest deck lists, concepts, and much, much more. Let's get back to comboing out. All right, Alex, a chance at redemption. We're on the play against Brian Paris. I actually faced them earlier this week when recording an Ant video, and in that video, they were playing 8 Mulch. Before then, I've played them a few times on 8 Cast. I don't know what they're playing tonight. How do you feel about this hand against those range of decks? I think it's a tad slow. Like, obviously, it's it's hard to mulligan brainstorm ponder, but it's a tad slow. Uh, I think against 8 Mulch, I would be pretty okay with this hand because this ponder can turn into an LED very, very quickly. And this brainstorm can put back an extra land. So I'd be, I'd be inclined to try it. I think I'm in the same boat. I think that we could easily have better hands but this is within the realm of keeps. Yeah, especially on the play, where we know we're going to resolve this ponder unless something absurd happens. Storm one, ponder. Of course will. All right, so this is certainly a range of cards here. Uh, if we think our opponent's on a blue deck, this ponder is amazing. 
Ah, oh, geez. But if they're on eight mulch, I don't know. So if it Probably is, just do nothing. If it is eight mulch, we're able to brainstorm, fetch away these two next turn, and then ponder. But we're looking to spike a lion's eye diamond after that. Yeah, I think I'd be inclined to shuffle this most of the time. All right, we're knowing gonna... our opponent's range. We'll listen to the boss here. We shuffled. Let's see how it pans yeah. out. I mean, if they go like turn one, like, oh, okay, well. All right, Dragon's Rage. I'm just coloring us, so we have a bunch of lands. This is still fine. Okay, so let's brainstorm looking for protection here. Not quite. Okay, so I think we just pass here. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you feel about this, but let's assume we draw blank on our turn. I think I'm down to just tap two lands and cast Burning Wish, attempting to get a Galvanic Relay. I think I agree with that. Excuse me. <laughs> that yeah, I, for I think that. I... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Taiga coming up. What were you saying? Yep. Uh, I was not saying anything. Uh, especially with the second Burning Wish here, that makes a lot of sense to me. All right, Burning Wish on the stack, and it resolves. Pick up that relay. Yeah. We do just want to pass here and not... We could attempt to cast the Relay this turn, but then we would lose to Daze on our Lotus Petal or on our Rite of Flame, which would be unfortunate. Project. So everyone is playing the, control, the controlling build, so they will have counterbalances uh, and no copies of Delver of Secrets. The counterbalances are typically in the sideboard, correct? Yeah. I, just I believe think... it's the full four bottles. It's just worth noting that distinction that we are not expecting counterbalance in game one. Expressive iteration. Our opponent did draw their two cards with Predict, so. I mean, I hope so. Um, they had a channeler. <laughs> did they? Did they know that, or was that just lucky? Oh yeah, yeah they would. They would know from the trigger. Okay, sorry. I'm I'm awake. I promise. All right. So they played a flooded strand. They have eight cards in hand. They're currently plus two cards between Predict and Expressive iteration. A lot of cards. Yeah. And now the channeler will look again into Ponder. So this build is supposed to be very, very good in the mirror because you end up essentially out card advantaging your opponent. Yeah. I think I would rather play against this as TES, though, than, than traditional Blue Red Delver. So that was pretty that was, good. Yeah. How much mana do we have? We have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think we lead on Veil. Or I, I guess it's free to lead on uh, these two. Yeah, we but, just lead on the mana and then put the Veil on the stack. Yeah, because there's a chance we can just resolve Echo here. Because... Yeah, and in this spot, the Echo is better because it will draw us more cards. We can um, actually relay and Echo. Yeah, I think I like that. Uh, so we can Burning Wish. Grab the Echo and then... Um... Yeah. Okay, so now we grab Echo. And now we Relay. Yeah. This is definitely planning to untap next turn, which I think we're very likely to, with just a lot more cards than our opponent. Um, and it does make this Echo less likely to win. <laughs> Look at those um, exiled. Yeah, so that's that's one wish and the tendrils and the main deck echo. So, as well as the main deck tendrils. All right, we do have to pass the turn here. You could play a Chromox and Ponder, but why waste the storm count when we have this tendrils living over here in exile? Yep. We also had the uh, fortunate side effect of shrinking channeler at least for a moment. Yeah, and then also our opponent had seven cards in hand anyway, so giving them seven random cards will most likely downgrade their hand versus seven curated cards from the scries and surveils and all that other nonsense. All right, they're bobbling. Misty Rainforest. 
So it's worth noting they're at 17. A force of will would put them at storm eight being lethal. Mm -hmm. Another ponder. That is delirium for our opponent. Always so delirious. Yeah. It's impressive they uh, got delirium by spending one mana in the process. Pretty good, pretty good. When the when the set spoiled, the Eternal Glory podcast thought that Dragon's Rage Channeler would be the breakout of Modern Horizons 2. I think we underestimated Ragavan a little bit, but we definitely nailed Channeler just being bonkers. Um, I think we got that part right. Yeah, did you notice what our opponent put in their graveyard? A force of will. <laughs> what are they looking for? I guess they were just putting anything in their graveyard to cast a Merktide. Okay, so it's go time. Can yeah. we find lethal? I hope so. Well, we should start with the spells that are face up in exile, probably, so we can play out a Rite of Flame. Should we tap the Badlands instead, because we want the blue sources to cast a couple of these ponders? Yeah, I'm also just trying to think what lands left are in our deck. I think we have the Swamp and the Trop, so the Mire only gets a Black Source, so I do agree that tapping this is correct. Yeah. And we can, we can use the uh, Lines of Diamond to pay for this Tendrils anyway, so... Okay, so we have red mana. I'm going to cast this before I ponder. Okay. Ponda. I think we shuffle this. I mean, the opal would give us metalcraft. I don't know if that actually matters. It's also storm. Let's keep the opal. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think that keeping the opal is fine and we can shuffle away the other two. Because that's another blue mana to cast another ponder. Uh... Which is kind of neat. We're probably allowed to imprint this Burning Wish in our hand. Okay, looking pretty good. Yeah. So, Alex uh, came back to the East Coast uh, over the last week and is exhausted from his flight back. But Alex, did you pick up any uh, classic Boston area accent stuff while you were here? Like, did the Panda and everything come back? Or... Uh, uh, are you so far removed? I'm I'm so far removed, and I I never really had a Boston accent to begin with, so unfortunate. Yeah. Okay. So, so given we saw predict, do you want the decays? Well, I, I think, guess that answers that question. Yeah, I think we just board like we would for our control matchup here. Uh, aside from the ad nauseum echo swap. Yep. Our opponent is unlikely to play effects that prevent us from echoing and. They're still pretty aggressive. Dragon's Rage Channeler still kills, kills you pretty quickly. And uh, they may, may also uh, be playing uh, Ledger Shredder. I know some Delver pilots have been experimenting with that. Uh, I think you did a podcast episode about that recently too, right? I did. Heard's pretty powerful. Yeah, it's uh, plays all, it reads pretty well, and then it just plays even better. Because it's almost a pseudo rule of law for your opponents too, because they'll try to play around it to not trigger it. Yeah, that's a really that, good like, point. Yeah, I don't think people are super great at understanding when they're supposed to play into it and when they're not at this point, but... Yeah. It takes a while to figure some stuff out. Like, I'm not trying to make fun of Legacy players here, but it took them like a year to realize that Deafening Silence and My Break weren't good against Doomsday. <laughs> All right. Uh, that so, sounds pretty good. Yeah, we're, we're missing the protection spell, but that said, you can't expect to have everything in your opening seven. Like, you can't ship this. Yeah, there's definitely a world where we just uh, talisman for galvanic relay as well. Okay, volcanic pass. How do you feel about just Meyer go? Yeah, uh, when when these Delver players want to play this land go game and hold up their pyroblasts, I am very happy to match them in land go. There's no reason to play our carpet and get it dazed or something like that. So, I'm actually pretty happy with the verdant draw. So there was something I was thinking about which was in order to cast the carpet, we would have had to fetch Taiga. And if that carpet was countered, we'd only have Lotus Petal to make black mana. And if you Dark Ritual off of a Lotus Petal, your opponents are way more likely to force that. Yeah, this is why Volcanic Island is the worst land of the deck, but... <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Ooh, that's good. Um, so the question is, do we hold for another turn or do we try to move? 
Uh, so I think our opponent has a Pyroblast at the very least. So I think that if, even if we did try to Echo, we'd have to Relay instead, and they could pick up a Counterbalance on the way back. Um, I'm inclined that we could definitely develop the carpet if we wanted to. Alright, I'm going to fetch Taiga here. Okay, and let's attempt... I'm going to play a Petal first in case of something like a Spell Pierce. I know a lot of people aren't playing Pierce, but it's pretty free to play this out. Yeah, I think we're kind of off the Relay plan, and we're kind of more into an Echo plan at this point. Okay, so I'm going to make a black mana here. And I think we just fetch and cast the grid without playing Nurk Ritual because we want it to look innocent. See if this resolves. Horse pitching days. So we could Dark Ritual right now off Lotus Petal into Wish Claw, into Relay. How do you feel about that? Uh, it feels so we would lose to a second copy of Days, which would be unfortunate. Um, but then again, we kind of don't have a plan, and it definitely like I think that it feels like they have Pyroblast, and they also have no pressure. Um, but maybe this is our best window to do this because they did pitch a Days. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. All right, Wishclaw Talisman, they have three cards in hand. So I'm pretty sure our opponent doesn't have a daze, otherwise they would have dazed us there. Okay, there's another card I'm worried about here, but I don't want to say it out loud. Uh, people from the area of the country you're from often end it with an AH. Galvanic Relay! All right, no Flusta. Relay is resolved. We flipped an abrupt decay. That's that's really good. And another relay. <laughs> Our opponent doesn't even want to play it out. Red Necro. Okay, Alex. We recovered from the tough round one. We smashed round two against the blue red archetype. I don't want to call it Delver because it obviously wasn't. Um, but yeah, that was a pretty good win. Yeah, we could call it no Delver. Let's do that. All right, <laughs> round three is coming up in just a second. Playing your favorite combo deck and paper just got so much easier with the Epic Storm mini token pack. You can pick one up at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $13. It includes 64 double-sided mini tokens. That's 128 tokens total. And they include 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm counters. That means that you can count your way all the way up to 20 for Grape Shot, everyone's favorite storm wind condition. A Galvanic Relay Exile Indicator, 4 treasure tokens for Strike It Rich, and then 10 monk tokens for our vintage friends. It also has Slime Time Live! Eve Progenitor Ooze Tokens with the Power Toughness already built in to make playing in paper so much easier. No fumbling around with dice. We've got you covered. Make sure to go grab those if you're playing Modern. And then Squirrels vs. Goblins, Chatterstorm vs. Empty the Warrens, the Battle of the Ages. You definitely need 20 Squirrel Tokens and 20 Goblin Tokens. You're going to love this mini token pack, I promise. And once again, you can grab that at theepicstorm.com slash shop. Match three on the play. I don't know, Alex. This one's pretty good. You're going to have to make a pretty convincing argument for me to ship it. All right. We can't cast any of our spells. Hmm. I mean, our spells are pretty good. That's why we put them in our deck, but uh, we can't cast any of them. I would uh, put this one back in the deck. All right. What about this one? This one, we can cast our spells. Uh, and I think I would just put the brainstorm back. I agree. So this is... we don't know that our opponent, if they're actually playing a blue deck yet, but it's so free to keep the Veil of Summer here. Yeah, because this is turn two Ad Nauseam already, assuming we play turn one Wishclaw Talisman. So we don't need any more pieces. And the, the Veil is, the, is just better than the Brainstorm in the event that are... It would be what we would want to find with the Brainstorm if we're playing against a blue deck. Okay, looking pretty good so far. Any mana next turn means that we have Ad Nauseam with Veil of Summer back up. Scalding Tarn. 
Delva. All right. So we're looking for a mana source here. Alex, in the event that we don't draw one, would you veil into Echo? Think about it. Or put, don't doesn't know the uh, bobble trick with Delver. Oh, well, we drew the mana anyway, so. Storm one. I don't even have to think about it. Uh, we pay for this. Yeah. Come on, Dark Ritual or Red of Flame. I mean, we could no, just we try. Just... We could try again next, next turn. Year. Yeah. <laughs> we could also just take the Protected Echo, but like, eh, I think we can just like take a couple damage from this Delver and it's fine. Yeah. A lightning bolt. Oh, another days. <laughs> All right. So this is effectively the same thing. Them playing a wasteland uh, in days, like yeah. it's fine. So we are going to seventeen here. Draw. Okay. I get a drawing this mana source to play around days uh, thing. That is true. So we can cast Ad Nauseam from 15 without a land drop. Seems fine to me. I'm a little bit afraid right now, Alex. One of us Why? is not very good at casting Ad Nauseam. Uh, good thing it's not me at the keyboard, then. All right, so we're going to be, th or, uh, I'm sorry, two Mana Rocks down. And by Mana Rocks, I mean Lotus Petal and Opal. Uh, Lion's Eye Diamond is certainly nice off of Ad Nauseam, but initial mana sources usually matter a little bit more. Okay, Defense Grid has been revealed. There's a Lotus Petal. Yikes, we're at six. Yep. Opal. We see a Diamond. There we go. All right, so now okay. we have Echo. All right. Now she has any tutor. I think we stop here. Yeah, there's there's no reason to keep flipping. Um, so I do think that we're supposed to brainstorm before we echo, just in case we hit. Because if you hit yeah. a burning wish, you can put it back and then ponder into it. Why why even do that? Why not just like hold priority and uh, uh yeah, or we don't even brainstorm. We just cast ponder, hold priority, crack for uh, black and red. Well, is that actually better? Because, like, you could just brainstorm into three good cards, right? Like, you don't have to... Well, if we find Talisman or Burning Witch, we went on the spot, so we, we just... We, and you don't need anything else if you do that, and we get to Echo anyway. All right. Because we can have the blue off of uh, the Lotus Petal. So... We'll do... This, this, this wants to be red. Or I guess that the red can come from the Petal. Yeah. So that's fine. Uh, it's worth noting Burning Witch actually wouldn't be lethal here. Oh, we don't have enough storm. That's funny. Yeah, so the brainstorm would have been better. I just realized after yeah. I did it. Can we undo? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um. All right. Ponder. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a pair of burning wishes. Uh, no justice. Yeah. Play like crap and still get rewarded. All right, so this next Seven. one is from eight. Burning Wish is nine. Tendrils is ten. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. We just have to not mess this up. <laughs> People are going to be watching this, and they're like, "Those two are supposed to be good at this deck, and they play this poorly." Of course, I can play that deck. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, sometimes in paper, I forget I have mana floating sometimes and just, like, you know, bonk myself even harder. It happens to the best of us. Yep. Okay. So, Ad Nauseam was successful there. So, we boarded in Abrupt Decay last round. Alex, how do you feel about Abrupt Decay versus the Delver variant of Delver? Don't need a dead card. So. Okay, so here we take out the Ad Nauseam because our opponent's playing an aggressive deck. Against the control deck, we we would board out the Echo, but here I think Echo makes a little bit more sense. Yep. All right. Yeah. Alex, 
let's say I'm new to playing the Epic Storm. Why are we boarding out this really powerful card in Ponder instead of boarding out things like Mox Opal and Chrome Mox? Well, instead of having card selection in Ponder, we're choosing to have card advantage in Galvanic Relay. And we want all of our mana rocks to stick around because they play very, very well with uh, Galvanic Relay. And when, you, when you're drawing so many cards, it's kind of the same thing as looking at a lot of cards with Ponder. So you don't need the cantrips as much. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, how do you feel about this hand with double Chromox in it? I, I, I like that we have lands, a pair of Burning Wishes, and this Veil of Summer, but like these Chromox is no fast mana. I would ship this. I, uh, it's just not quite over the line for me. I honestly I think I would keep it only because we can try to get the cyborg relay with one of the wishes. Even though that these aren't that good, I still think Veil vale of Summer plus Galvanic Relay is powerful enough. If you still feel like we should mulligan, we can. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Like, I don't really care how this league goes, and I'm willing to do whatever you want. Let's, let's keep it, see what happens. You sure? Mm hmm. Okay. If we lose, it is 100% on me and not Alex. I'm just going to throw that out there. Yeah. But we're not going to lose because we're, we're playing the Epic Storm. Come on. We can't lose. Definitely not like round one. Delver killer. That was a good draw. Yeah. So if you wanted to be super aggressive, you could play Chromox there, imprint the Rite of Flame and Burning Wish. The pr issue with that is your opponent can just daze your Burning Wish. And we're trying to be the Galvanic Relay deck, and you really don't want to throw away that many resources. One thing that I've experienced a lot with doing tutoring sessions is people feel this pressure to always cast their spells. Alex, do you feel that pressure? No, I hate casting my spells before I have to. Like, uh, I want to hold them in my hand, you know? Like a, like a good blue player, just hold all my cards, and then if, if my opponent makes me cast them, I'll cast them, but... Uh, it's there's still this notion I think from a couple of years ago before we revamped with Wish Quad Talisman that TS has to be this fast deck that you have to win on turn one, turn two all the time. You don't have to, you just get to scale into the late game as long as you want. That's very true. Uh, all the cards in this deck are designed at this point to provide advantage turn over turn over turn. And over sometimes your opponent has to counter those, those engine <laughs> type of cards. Wow. Goodbye, Carpet of Flowers. We cannot yeah. Veil of Summer this. I just want to throw that out there. We have Polluted Deltas or Land, which can only get Tropical Island. So this does not get your Taiga. But even if it could, yeah. I don't think I'd throw away a Veil on a Carpet. No, and then if we get Days there, it's a, it's a pretty big blowout. All right, so the opponent's drawing and going up to five cards. They drew a Scalding Tarn into Delver. Our opponent has gone to three cards. I'd like to draw a Lion's Eye Diamond off the top. I was just thinking the same thing. It's like my favorite card to draw. I'll take that, though. Uh, I think we just jam a Burning Wish into Relay here. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we cast the Relay this turn, but we certainly pick up the yes. Galvanic Relay. Yeah. All right. Um, yes. Ideally, they wouldn't... So there's two things we don't want to happen here. We don't want this Delver to flip, and now it will, and we don't want this to become delirious, and it likely will because I said it out loud. Um, <laughs> but basically, we don't want to take six because we're going to relay next turn and then pass the turn back, so we just don't want to die to a pair of Lightning Bolts. Yeah, I do think that the Delver players board some number out post-board, uh, so that's less likely but we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, people say stuff like that, and I mean, I think it's probably correct, but you'd be surprised at how often I see Lightning Bolt in post-board games. Yeah, I think you're supposed to have some number in, but... Expressive yeah. iteration. And here it is. Yeah, so let's see if our opponents stack this correctly and has... Interesting. They kept on top with it or with uh, their Dragon's Ray channel, or they didn't have the opportunity to, to uh, make the... Dragon's Race Channel are directly delirious with this expressive iteration. So that means that they also kept a card that they knew that they wanted, right? Because they put two cards back with Brainstorm then could have surveilled one there and didn't. Yeah. And then they put a Daze in the Exile Zone. 
I have to so, imagine their hand's pretty good here. Uh, yeah, but I think we can beat it. All right, let's try. Right of flame. Right of flame. So I think I would choose not to imprint the Burning Wish here. I think, yeah, I want to cast Burning Wish. I want to see if they'll oh, try that's, to... Oh, that's way better. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, we can see what happens. We could grab Empty here if we wanted. I'm not sure if we do. But we could grab Empty. We could also just gra grab Ponder. And then cast Ponder. Does Empty win here? So... So we make 12... Or uh, 14, which are the same number. For, well, with blockers, I think. Yeah. Um, I think I'm inclined just to relay here. I think we're pretty safe, and I think the relay is just more likely to win. All right. I'm going to cast this ponder. Let's grab Underground C. Ponders from four. Uh, uh, I think we want to keep that Bright of Flame on top so that way we can reveal it to the relay next turn. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think we can just draw the Wishclaw Talisman. Right? Yeah. Um, and now we're allowed to imprint the... Uh... Would it be better to... I'm just talking out loud here. To lead on okay. Veil of... Uh... Yeah, yeah. We just draw the, the Veil. Well, do we, want, right. do we want to cast it so that way we don't lose the fluster? Um, but then next turn we would have to... We'd only have three protection spells left in our deck. They only can have one interactions. Yeah. So then we draw the, the Veil here. Um, so I think we just go Mox Imprint Veil, uh, play Empty Chromox, cast Galvanic Relay. Interesting. So you want to imprint it? Okay. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we don't have uh, only imprint one of them though. Yeah. Because uh, I think we only need one veil to win next turn, uh, unless something super weird happens here. But we can't cast uh, both this turn anyway. Oh, I'm so, so dumb. I was like, why would you imprint? No, I see now. So now if they have fluster, we can. I'm so sorry. Ignore yeah. me. Ignore me. <laughs> And we still get to draw seven cards here. I think it's better to have this veil. Yeah. Like, we don't need to, like, read for the eighth card when one of the cards we want to actively draw off the relay is here. One way to think about the relay cards is you're kind of rummaging them away when you're not casting them, casting permanent spells. Yeah, that's so absolutely correct. Yeah. And one of the cards we want to draw is, is a Veil of Summer, so why are we rummaging away a Veil of Summer to try to find Veil of Summer? That would be true. I was mostly just like, how do you protect uh, Galvanic Relay without... And they're like, it just escaped me. Like, I see it now, obviously. <laughs> so interesting, yeah. they surveilled away Wasteland, so they decided that choking us on mana is not a relevant uh, action. And let's pop this out so we can see what we revealed. So everything from the Right of Flame down is our card. So Right of Flame, Wishclaw Talisman, Mox Opal, Verdant, Brainstorm, Dark Ritual, Chicken Tenders. <laughs> so if i'm going to be completely honest alex i haven't been pulling a whole lot of the epic storm recently and i feel like my rust is showing in this league yeah i i have also been distracted with other formats um this format ha legacy itself has felt a little bit stale uh which is not always a bad thing um sometimes it's good to bounce around to different formats different games see what happens uh, I know that you've also been playing a lot of a lot of uh, CDH. That is true. Uh, multiplayer magic's a heck of a heck of a thing, especially when you solve a lot of the power level issues by just everybody playing at maximum power. Uh, I've also been playing yeah, I mean, maximum power modern recently with Neoform, which is a blast. <laughs> okay, Chandler still not delirious. Somebody's got to take that thing to school because it's very disobedient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of Delaware players do board out their Merc Tides in the matchup, so... All right, Mox Opal. Let's uh, try this Rite of Flame. Slide this over. Okay. 
So our opponent is tapped out, so they can't have Pyroblast, which is pretty neat. Yeah. Let's uh, just cast our crit roll here. Is this a card that if you're the opponent that you want to force? It looks a lot more tempting than it actually is, right? Like, it, uh, we have the land in exile. Okay, so they decided to force pitching force. Which we get to fight a little bit here. They're going to go they all do in. do have double. All in encountering Dark Ritual, which is a little bit odd. We do have this land drop. Yeah. So that's Storm 6. Right of Flame is uh, 7. Uh, and Tendrils is 8, unfortunately. Well, we can but rotate Claw we... for Dark Ritual. Yeah, we can rotate Claw for LED. Oh, that works too. Yeah. I guess Lion's Eye Diamond is technically better than Dark Ritual now. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we're not casting spells from our hand. All right, you got me. Fine, I guess I'll get Black Lotus. But I guess the real uh, reason to do it here is that I can also cast my Brainstorm, which is something I wanted to do personally. Yeah, I like casting Brainstorm. It's a very, very fun magic card. All right, so we'll add Black Mana first. And then tap this for blue. Cast this. <laughs> All right. Just in case our opponent accidentally draws a card and then has something, we'll cast Veil of Summer. And target them. Easy peasy. Alex, did you uh, notice the lack of four carpets in either of these matchups? No, it felt pretty clean to me. Yeah. Unfortunately, we haven't got to use Pulverize yet, but there's still two more rounds of magic. Maybe in the next few? I don't know. We'll see. Hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, TCG Player, or Amazon, and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below, and in there you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm, but that's not all. We've included a card hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your card hoarder cart to make life simple for you. Alex, we've lost our first die roll. How do you feel about that? Uh, not too bad. My run rate is significantly higher on the draw. Not going to lie. Okay. Well, how do you feel about this hand on the draw? Uh, I like it. We, we, have, we can go fast uh, with an echo on turn one if we want to. Uh, and we can also just sit here and make land drops for a few turns. So okay. I'm, I am very inclined to keep this the, a hand that looks like this. We also saw the power of the Epic Storm's ability to just like cast Burning Wish into Relay into crushing the opponent. So we do have Burning Wish into Relay for that. So I'm definitely into that. It looks like our opponent is playing uh, Jeskai Control, so they might have some element of the Days Undoing combo, which would strip away our hand, but fortunately... Galvanic Relay is really good against uh, the Days Undoing combo because if we played out all of our spells and they're all sitting safely in exile, and that was a draw. That was a very then good draw. Out of much. Yeah. So we might wheel before our Echo, before our opponent next turn. Um, I think that there is a little bit of pressure for us to try to do something next turn. What is that? Is this a Stoneforge? What are you doing over there? It is a Stoneforge. I am so smart. So smart. Huge brain. Huge brain. Okay, so are you getting Cauldra or Batter Skull? They do get Cauldra. Okay. They have six cards in hand, and one of them is a really bad artifact. Artifact <laughs> for our own Mox Opal. Land. Hmm. Oh, I think I'm just very inclined to go, like, drop Cast Veil here. Alex wants to spin the wheel. We'll give Alex whatever he wants. Yeah, because like I, I think that our opponent's like definitely very likely to just play Cauldron next turn. But if they play something like a Narset, then our plan just kind of goes out the window. So all right, let's grab that Badlands because we want to pair Trop with Badlands. Right of Flame. Feel free to hit that F six key opponent. Yeah. Uh, notable sequencing thing here: when you're casting Burning Wish for Echo, just don't play out your Lion's Eye Diamond first. Uh, it doesn't matter here, but a lot of times it, it does, and you just, like, accidentally get Force of Vigor, which is really awkward. True. It's usually best to just have good 
you know, like mechanics for when it does matter. Yep. All right. Unfortunately, we do not have metal crap wrapped up, wrapped up here, but maybe we'll have it after our draw seven. Yep. Okay. Uh, we're gonna pass yep. the turn, but this was a fine exchange. Like I'm. Yes, we got rid of our opponent's caller, so that buys us a ton more time. Uh, or hopefully, got rid of it at least. So that buys us a lot of time, and we have a veil to rebuild with and a ponder to find something. So I'm I'm not feeling unhappy about our spot here. Baron Mesa. Is this a ponder or a brainstorm? Ponda. Alex, what is your preferred ponder? Do you like the M10 art, or do you like the Lorwyn art? Uh, I think both arts are pretty good, but... um. I, I just use the Time Spiral Remastered uh, Ponders. Gotta, gotta get the old borders in there. Well, I know you're well, a fan of uh, original pack printing, which is why you're not using the correct Galvanic Relay, even though those are now available on Magic the Gathering Online. I knew that you were going to, to do a sponsored ad about that. Love it. <laughs> All right, let's uh, try to put back this Chromox here. Yep. No main deck Pyroblast there. And we found the Burning Wish. What's the other card you put back here? Uh, it's either the second ponder or the taiga. I think both are... Ah, wait, so do we want to keep the chrome mox instead? If we put back... We could put back taiga ponder, and then we have mana off the chrome mox if we want to try to do something this turn. I th honestly think I'm just going to pass. Like, I don't think we need to jam here. I agree. So then it's probably, like, I'd also chrome be okay... Mox... Uh, I mean, we don't have to do this. I'm just talking out loud. I'd all, like, I think initially when I looked at this, I was leaning Ponder. But how do you feel about Rite of Flame and just accept that like we're not winning this turn, so maybe we might as well get two Sculpts? I don't know. It's just a thought. I think that's fine. All right. We can do it. I'm not, like, I don't feel really strongly about it. I just wanted to potentially raise the question. Yeah. I think that kind of where this hand wants to go is it wants to end up at a relay next turn. Or just... Yeah. <laughs> um, so the opal is kind of... Yeah, the opal doesn't do anything, but we can draw the other cards. We can't quite relay this turn because our colors don't line up. But we can, we can do things next turn. We could even try to double relay. Yeah. Uh, actually, we don't have the colors to do that unless we ponder into something. But... I'm we'll also see. somewhat interested in trying to get our opponent to force a Burning Wish into, ooh, end step, Batter Skull. They didn't main phase the Cordera. That's interesting. Okay. They also didn't Pyroblast our Brainstorm or any of our spells. Did they just, like, want to conceal the information or something? Instead know. of just, like, hitting us for an extra five damage? And the five damage is very relevant here. Yeah, because we, we we could be at thirteen right now. Two mana, three mana, blood moon. Well, that's pretty bad. We do have a chromox on top. I'm just gonna point that out. Um, we do. There's another opal underneath that. So we can go chromox and print dark red, dark red, burning wish. Uh, try to get them to force and then we relay. Is that our best line? Yeah, I mean, I just want to think through this. Um, we have five cards. I was not expecting main deck Blood Moon. Um, I was not either. I guess we know we're drawing a blank next turn in the form of the second Mox Opal. Yeah. So if if we didn't know that, the, there's like a wish for pure angle, I think. I also have a, a more spicy line here. So I think I sequence wrong if that's going to be the line we take. But you could also burning wish for pulverize. And I oh know the cauldron itself is indestructible. Never mind. Yeah. Um, let's see if this resolves. Want, want to use one of the black, right? It doesn't matter. We, these are mountains. Like, this is just... Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Freebies. Horse I guess rate. we only have five mana anyway, so we can't do anything here. Horse of Will. 
It resolves, okay. So we can't double relay because we're one mana short. I guess so, we just pick up a... Do we pick up relay or pier or even tendrils? I think it's tendrils only because we're dead next. Like, we can't get a, like another relay doesn't do anything for us because we're dead on board. Yep. Okay, and then relay for four. We do know that we're about to reveal an extra opal. Yeah, but if we draw, if any of these are another artifact, then that's good news for us. Hey. There we go. Okay. Okay. So now we have some colors sorted. Um, uh, so we can do blue, black, black, or green, black, black. One is six cards. Out. Another stone forge. Okay. Is this where they reveal the second cauldra? <laughs> it's a legendary. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, I was gonna say it's a good thing it's legendary anyway. So they're just gonna main phase a second equipment. Five cards in hand. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go to seven here, and it's time to party. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Yeah, this LED is is basically only good for enabling metal craft. So, ooh, that was good. That was huge. So let's start on the LED. I think. I think I want. Are you sure? No, no. Cause the, yeah, because the LED is worse than the pedal here, because the pedal casts the cards in our hand. Okay. Right. I just think that and this could be. This... Okay. Yeah. Okay. They let it resolve. I just think that this could be more relevant, assuming that we ponder into something better than tendrils, like a wish claw or a burning wish. But thankfully, it didn't matter. That's fair. Um, um. So do we float blue and then play opal? Yeah, I like that. All right. Storm so three. Opponent did not gain life this turn. Cauldra is not equal to batter skull, so they're still within the storm ten range. Yeah, so we can cast the Ponder here, and we have uh, Veil either through Mox Opal or through LED. Okay. Um... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think we actually take the Ponder. So if we take Ponder, it's an extra Storm. We can... Hold on, does that actually work? I don't think it does. Because you end up being short of uh, Wishclaw using... Actually, you could probably just Wishclaw Burning Wish Tendrils. No, you can't because there's no Tendrils in the sideboard. Oh, you're correct. Um, so this is the sideboard Tendrils? Well, we can grab the main deck one. Yeah. So we have... How much main do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... We have 11 mana, so we uh, ponder go down to 10, uh, claw to 8, um, uh, activate claw to 7, tendrils goes to 3, so we can cast both these veils and the ponder in that sequence. Or no, I counted the ponder, so we can just draw the ponder and I think we're okay. Alright. So let's we just have to make sure that the colors line up. <laughs> all right well, let's start with the sideboard uh we oh, want sorry, to cast the one from our hand um because uh we might want the led to crack for green right i don't, I don't think that's true because then we don't have black black yeah. for tendrils you're right so let's just start with this one all right so i believe that the top card is wish claw um yep and it doesn't matter if I draw it or ponder into it, so I'm just going to Veil here. Long pause. Brutal. And that, that yeah. Should... <sighs> Damn. We're dead. Yeah, that's actually a reason to do that in not that order, I guess. Because now we don't get the ponder. We wouldn't have double black anyway. Yeah. Hmm. That was rough. I wonder yeah. if there was a better way of sequencing that. I'd have to rewatch the game. Yeah, it feels like there was something there, and we just 
slightly missed it. All right, so we're facing the Stone Blade deck with Main Deck Blood Moon. I'm pretty sure we're going to want these decays. Relay, are you interested in carpet? I am very interested in carpet. If our opponent fetches like seven planes to play around carpet, I'm fine with that. I think that that hurts them more than it hurts us. All right, we're going to take out the Echo and then one of each Mox. Our opponent's very likely to have a bunch of blast effects, but as Alex mentioned in the beginning of that game, there's also the possibility of Hull Breacher or Narset shutting off the Echo of Aeons. Okay, time to bounce back, see if we can recover from that game one. Yikes! Alex, I'm not going to allow you to tell me that this is a keep. I hope that's okay. Yeah, I would put this one back in the deck really fast, too. Okay. So, question for you. Do you think Wishclaw or Burning Wish is better, and why? I would keep Wishclaw Talisman here because uh, you can just play it, and that represents a Veil of Summer. It's also possible mana for a Dark Ritual. Yep. Built-in protection from Blood Moon. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely also the risk where uh, the Wishclaw Talisman could get answered, but I'm inclined just to put it into play next turn and opponent can do what they will. All right, so they're using Prismatic Vista. Grabs Basic Island under. Yeah, the Blood Moon definitely got us last game. I was not expecting that. Draw. All right, so we picked up a brainstorm. In my mind, I was fetching Taiga. Now I'm not so sure. Do we like? Do we play Wishclaw here? Do we cast Brainstorm? I, now I'm somewhat inclined to think Trop into Wishclaw, but I'd be interested in your thoughts, Alex. I think I like Trop into Wishclaw, and then we can spend next turn casting Brainstorm. The, uh, the risk is if they have red source next turn for pyroblast but yeah it's definitely a risk but i i think i'm willing to take that like i think opponent is also just very inclined to tap up for stoneforge mystic next turn true all right so i am not going to cast my brainstorm into that flooded strand i'm just throwing that out there even with drawing another one i'm just gonna pass yeah, I think given that we have two, I would just use our mana and cast it on their end step. Uh, if they don't do anything on their turn three. Well, actually, casting Brainstorm to three open mana is uh, yeah. not allowed against these decks. I was going to say, but I wanted to see if you got there first. All right, yeah. they're going to cast their own Brainstorm. It's not pretty comfortable trading one of our Brainstorms for a mana and a Pyroblast from them. Obviously, if our opponent does something silly like play uh, Hate Permanent, we would just decay that instead. Very true. I don't know about you, but I feel like we're slightly behind this game. I don't know why, but I just feel that way. And I feel like part of it's that we have this ad nauseum that we're so far away from casting. If I like, Depending on how good this Brainstorm is, if we could put this back into the deck and just relay instead, I'd be very interested in that. Yeah, I think that the, the Nas is far away. Uh, and also, like, our hand feels clunky that we, we have to spend a lot of time casting these brainstorms, and we don't have fetch lands here to cast them yet. But I, I also have that impression that we're slightly behind. All right, and they fetched another basic here. Although, you don't need to fetch a basic mountain if it's going to be Blood Moon. Here's Prismatic Ending. That's certainly annoying if this is Prismatic Ending. Nope, they changed their mind. Okay, so... I don't know if it was... They kept the Did you mind? Okay. That uh, was a good draw. It was, but I still think I'm just going to pass here. Yeah, I think I would have cast the Brainstorm on their end step just to like, draw out the Power Blast and then we could try to resolve the second one. I don't know. Because, like, I, I don't think that we're scaling at this point. Like, I think the way our draw has lined up, like, maybe we just they, need to do things. Maybe they were trying to cast this last turn off those. Name's yeah. Burning Wish. Okay. Sure. 
I do not care about decaying that at all yet. If, if you wanted to, the reason would be to keep life total points for this. Yeah. All right. So let's do your line. I just waited a turn. You can blast me. No. All right. So I'm very interested in putting this sad nauseam back. Um, yeah, we can just put back Nas Decay, and then it's fine. So I think you're supposed to put back a card that you don't care about getting surgical, um, like shuffled away. So that would be Rite of Flame. No, don't we want the Rite of Flame? Okay. Because we have the Relay in our hand? Yeah, I guess so. All right, no surgical. So attempt carpet. Okay, so let's switch phases and we can make double red. Mm -hmm. So here's a question. Do you, would you rather increase your storm count and cast the brainstorm, or do you want to relay into the ad nauseum that would be in exile? That's really interesting. Uh, relaying into the exile nas is kind of appealing because we get, we have all the pieces. So I think that that's worth drawing one less card for a guarantee of a banger. Yeah, and we get to keep our mana open as well for an unstep abrupt decay. Yep. All right, ad nauseum. Meyer, Taiga, so we can't... <laughs> uh, we have Volcanic to fetch. Yeah. Just kind of funny. That was a really bad relay. <laughs> yep. I agree. Uh, okay. I think we're going to be con pretty constrained on mana next turn, so I'm like pretty inclined to cast this Brainstorm quickly. Leaves up red again. Narsa. I would cast this brainstorm here, I think. Uh, it's our decision <laughs> that we have, yes. Uh, let's grab the volcanic. Yeah, I don't need double black here. And we have both Taiga and Badlands sitting in exile, so... Well, that was pretty good. Okay. So, a thought here is, do you think our opponent has double force? Because if we do think they have double force, we could relay again instead of trying to protect the ad nauseum with Veil. Vale. They reveal Pyroblast. So now they actually have the blast. Yeah, but that doesn't matter because all of our blue cards are stopped by Nurset anyway. Um, That's true. Uh, we get to Nas into relay, right? Correct. So we'll add black here. So we can play Taiga. Just go Dark Rite right of Flame. Um, we also have the option to decay the Narset somewhere, or the Meddling Mage somewhere in the sequence, depending on what they do to our Nas. Okay, so let's play this. I imagine that this is going to be countered, but crazier things. All right, two floating mana. Put Ad Nauseam on the stack. Yeah, and I think that you're right that we don't want to uh, veil this because we lose to double force and we can just relay instead. I think you need to kill the metal image if you're going to relay. Yeah. We have two cantrips um, in our deck. Meanwhile, we have four Burning Wish. I agree. That's just an extra storm, too, so. Okay, so now let's kill the mage. Do you have to crack the LED, which is slightly annoying? Yeah, I did realize that. I think we'll be okay, though. Okay, so we're going to get six cards off this. Uh, six, seven... No, we, we can't empty the Wardens. A, we don't have enough mana, and B, it's just way too risky. Alright, relay for six. May our cards be better. Lotus Petal, Dark Ritual, Chrome Mox, Burning Wish, Lines of Diamond, Veil of Summer! Alright, alright, alright. We got a game. Okay. So our opponent does have our very own Wishclaw Talisman. They also have this Narset ability. They're using Narset. Picks up Ponder. I'm Ponder. I am 
very happy for our opponent to pick up cantrips. I want them to tap many lands on their turn. I'd be a lot happier if that said like Supreme Verdict or Cauldra Complete, but you know, I'll take That's it. That's fair. <laughs> these lands were very popular when I was a kid. I believe that these are, this one is Portal Three Kingdoms, but I think, yeah, this one's Portal. Hmm, maybe they're not the lands I was thinking of. I was thinking that these were the APAC lands, but this is Portal Second Age and this is Portal Third Age, but they're mm -hmm. Black Border Online for some reason. Yeah, it's because white water, white water is disgusting, especially online. Uh, I'll add to my seventh or, twiddles in my eighth edition Merchant Scroll. Didn't you buy some of those in foil just to get rid of a? Or that's oh no, that's what I did. Is I bought foil eighth edition twiddles. No, that's I did that as online. well. I definitely yeah. did that. All right, so <laughs> they've activated Wish Claw. I'm trying to think of what we don't want to see here, and I think it's come down to Norod. Um being the card because like a cannonist or something we can just blow up that doesn't matter at all yeah we can just decay that if we need to well i mean oh you're right we could just get the tendrils out of the main deck yeah this might not matter at all and they just gave us a third <laughs> land oh boy yeah i don't know if we can generate enough storm but we can definitely do some things and stuff here i feel like we're about to turn the corner Definitely. I mean, it's a tie ball game right now, according to the math. 16 to 16. Draw. Okay. okay. So I think we want to hide this at least for a moment. We'll add Black Man with the carpet. All right. So we have five storm here, six storm. If they force, it's from seven. Tendrils would be eight. So we lose the double force. Um,. Well, double force will put them to 14, unless one of them is a force of negation, so... Yeah. Um, I think we just started this. Just, yeah. I guess, like, mana isn't a bottleneck. But if we have to decay the meddling mage, then um, that does open us up to counter magic chill point on the burning wish. So... Force pitching okay. expressive iteration. So now they're at 15. Uh, yep. Dark Ritual. Petal. Diamond. Let's play Opal. That's storm number six. So it has to be a Force of Negation here. Yeah, and if we went to go get the Abrupt Decay, we would lose to Force of Will or Force of Negation, and this line only loses to... Uh, well, I say loses very loosely here. I mean... Uh, okay. Loses... Yeah. We could also we could Relay... Also um, I don't know if that's good or not, but it's an option. I mean, then they don't have a... We don't have a claw, they don't have a claw. They get to attack us for two and cast whatever cantrips they want. I they think cast one of the Yeah, I think I, I agree. We're not even, like, dead if they have the Force Negation. We have forever to draw out of it. We do know that they have Pyroblast in hand, so they... The other three would have to be negation blue card. Yeah. All right. Target you. All right. Going down. The final copy. Woo! All right. So we still have to get game three. We did not win game one. Yep. All right, so we know that our opponent has Meddling Mage. Alex, are you interested in something like Chain of Vapor because our opponent has permanent hate? I am not interested in Chain of Vapor whatsoever in this matchup. Are you uh, interested in sideboarding and pulverize? Uh, I mean, if you're like a masochist who wants to take an extra six off your tendrils. So yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, it answers like two thirds of their artifacts. Okay, so we're going into game three, we're on the draw against the Jeskai Blade deck. Honestly, I think we keep this. I'm not even joking. Yeah. Just find a wood note or resolve brainstorm. There's somebody that's just like incredibly angry right now. They're like, you're going to keep that garbage? And the answer is yes. I love garbage. 
Owen's on like the play all unique basics plot too. Hmm. I think we just yeah, I hold that. Yeah, we don't want to run it out on turn one because it just gets prismatic ending. Um, we surely haven't and, seen one of those yet, for what it's worth. That's true. Uh, and then also, like, we could build this wish claw into a real light. Like, they showed us the best thing that they can tutor for is uh, meddling mage, and I just don't care about meddling mage. I do agree. So they're end step brainstorming, which means one of two things: they don't have land two, and their hand is all counters, or they. Have something like Stoneforge with no fetch land and they want to shuffle. To me, this is a desperation play. Mm -hmm. Brian bringing up that 2011 uh, Stone Blade matchup knowledge. I get it. I'm old, okay? I was around for the <laughs> dawn of time. Uh, I'm, I'm well aware. So, they, if they want to get a basic here, it has to be the mountain. But they showed us that they really like fetching basics last turn. That's fine by me. So now we get to resolve brains from fetch. Yep. So the question is, do we want to fetch the swamp? And they got batter skull and not cauldra, which means they might have cauldra in hand. Draw. Okay. So let's get underground C. And brainstorm. Okay. That was actually pretty good. What do you think we want to put back here? Like, I'm inclined for the taiga, and then I'm not so sure after that. It's definitely the taiga. Uh, it could be taiga plus uh, taiga Volk or taiga delta. Because I think so. What I want to do this turn is I think I would then play carpet and then play a claw. Uh, it, we could even put away the relay if we wanted to. Because maybe we're playing in such a way that the relay doesn't work very well for us. And we just like go to town with double claw. Okay. It's kind of awkward if we get like. If we're going to put back relay, we might as well put back the opal, I think. Uh, I guess never mind. We have Metalcraft through double. Yeah. Um... And we want to put back the tiger because we want to fetch it. So the question is is opal better than land four? I think they're about even. But I think I want to keep this in case we want to fetch a swamp. I don't know. Yep. I'm, I'm going to put back Volk. Yeah, landing the carpet also helps us play through Blood Moon as well. Grab the Taiga. And let's try a carpet of flowers. That resolves. So now okay. we'll switch phases. Play Wishclaw Talisman. So Alex, I'm going to call it now so when we get blown out by it, I can't pretend that I'm shocked. We can be set back to the Stone Age by a Fuse card. What is that Fuse card? Yeah. Uh, it's that card that flips from one and two on top of Counterbalance, right? That would be it. We're talking about Wear Tear. It, it doesn't do that anymore, but it used to. Yeah. Uh, we talked about it this week on the Eternal Glory podcast. So they now have three mana. They could have the Wear Tear. Uh, so end step better. This just feels coming. like... Yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to add black mana. Uh, no, uh, red mana. Yeah. Okay. So now we can go like Opal Claw Veil Relay or something like that. I think we'd want to do Claw first. You know yeah. What? Yep. Okay. So now we can get them to counter the Veil. Storm three. I think we have plenty of protection in the form of both of our wish claws here. So. Horse pitching Hydro Blast. Three cards cool. in hand. And now we just relay. I'm going to grab the swamp. Dab that. And. The reason why Brian actually fetched there was to represent uh, a second veil. Yeah, and we, realistically, we don't have one, but uh, I was also thinking about back to basics. Not that our opponent's likely to play one in their Blood Moon deck, but it's still pretty free. All yeah. right, look at these. Well, that's that's a uh, pretty good. <laughs> we, so I, you know, what we we're talking about feeling um, behind last game. I feel ahead. You just jinxed it. You just jinxed it. All right, here comes the Batter Skull. They have two unknowns. 
So one of the ways that we could actually lose this game is by underestimating our opponent too much. And by that, I mean, sometimes people get a little bit too confident they're here. They're like, how could I possibly lose? And they go all in on something like Peer into the Abyss without thinking about the possibilities. So I just wanted to point that out here because if for some reason we were really reckless with how we sequenced this, we could lose to like a whole bre Breacher. Um, yeah. So I just want to point that out. Blood we are at 12, which is kind of annoying. Um, but... Okay. Storm 2... They're at 23. They're the Michael Jordan of life totals. Um, let's fail. And that resolves. Okay. okay. So let's just think through this for a moment. So here's four mana, seven mana. We have 12 mana. Burning Wish into Pier is nine mana, which means we would have three mana left over, which is enough to Wish Claw into uh, Abrupt Decay. So we could even beat a Hull Breacher here as long as we use the correct colors. Am I crazy yep. here? No, you're right. Okay. So I'm going to hold priority on this Burning Wish because we don't need to use the one in Exile. Just grab or add black here. It's fine. All yep. right. Six minutes on clock is plenty. Grab Disbiss. Okay. Wonderful. It's in right there. So, I mean, it's easy to say this when we're so far ahead, and I'm not trying to, like, uh, brag about winning a game of Magic. Like, it's a league match. It doesn't matter. But I think so far this league, we've shown you that the Epic Storm just crushes these fair blue decks, um, even without the fourth carpet. It's just, it didn't matter that much, just based on what we were swapping it with. Yeah. We'll grab another Tendrils just in case. Okay, so let's cast this one. They'll never know we swapped it. We'll know. We'll know on the spreadsheet, Brian. Yes, we will. <laughs> All right, we're 3-1. We've rallied back. There's one match left. Alex, prediction time. Do you think oh, we're, we're going to the fifth one? Of course. Okay, or Alex, four, four, one. Alex says we're going to win. Stick around and find out. If you're looking for more great Magic the Gathering content, definitely check out the Eternal Glory podcast. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss Legacy. That said, a lot of what we talk about transcends all formats. We're available on all major podcast platforms. All right, the fifth and final match. Alex, I have one result against this person, and they were on the Epic Gamble. How do you feel about this hand in that matchup on the draw? A little slow. Uh, if we find something to convert this Chromox into a red source, it is a turn one echo, but I don't love that type of echo. Um, in the matchup, I think I would mulligan. Uh, but who knows if our opponent's actually on the deck. That's true. Um, I'm going to keep it. We're going to play the game where we're not going to mulligan to something that our opponents played once in the past we're just gonna see what they're up to and then make a decision if they are on the epic gamble we always have like turn one chrome mox and print ponder brainstorm too and then reevaluate. yeah and uh, earlier this this uh league we ran into someone who had a history of playing eight mulch and eight cast and then they just dealt played delver so so the Epic Gamble does have a Singleton Volcanic Island in it. Okay. All right. Does our decision about whether or not we kept our hand matter? Right of Flame. Burning Wish. Uh, no, it didn't matter. They discard Echo of Aeons. Interesting. Are they emptying here? Please? They're going to empty sure. us. Sure. All right. I am in. Yeah. Ooh, that was That's good. That's a pretty good draw. Uh, so we um, can turn one Wish Claw into Ponder. Yeah, I like that. We do need to imprint the Brainstorm, though, so that way we can have this Burning Wish's backup for our own Echo if we need it. 
Yeah, I think that uh, next turn we get to um, next turn we get to Echo or we get to Pier. So this right of flame means uh, so how much mana do we have? We we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mana. So this Pier's next turn if we find an LED with the uh, Wish Claw. All right, so right of flame is equal to dark ritual here because our opponent's right of flame. Mm -hmm. So we'll take ten. I uh, I hate that they switched the goblin token art. By the way, hate it. Yeah, not my favorite art. All right, so now we're gonna put ourselves to nine. All right, so right of flame makes three. Dark different ritual. era of card design. The best era of card design. Now we go get a diamond. <laughs> go grab. We could also grab Rite of Flame here and keep a diamond in our deck. I'm just going to throw that out there. That, that's technically true. So this would make four. We already have triple black. Oh my god. <sighs> Alex is no fun. All right. So we will cast Burning Wish in response to a triple block. Eight mana. Let's, let's save some misclick equity. Honestly, I feel like to, there's to get... a, a higher misclick <laughs> equity with the LED. What if no, I don't? That's what it's, it's, yeah, it's fine. All right, so Pier. And now we've drawn two copies of Rite of Flame. We'll, we'll have to find the last one just in case. Okay. Love peering to the abyss. Oh, there it is. Yes, we got to cast all 13, four. 13 red mana. We did it. My mom can finally Red be proud flame of me. At plus five. All right. Burning wish. And uh, 17 drills. We could have flexed on them and then emptied for larger and then used Wish Claw to grab tendrils. <laughs> I feel like that is bad juju, though. Uh, I, and I'm, I'm, I know that I sound silly here, but sometimes I feel like when I showboat in game ones, I then lose the match because like I did my opponent wrong. It doesn't make any sense. I'm aware that it doesn't matter, but it's a concern that I actually have. It's not rational. <laughs> right. Sideboarding. We definitely don't want this. Uh, yep. So our opponent's deck does have tendrils in the sideboard as a win condition. They also have a grape shot. We don't have grape shot, but also it doesn't matter. Um, so you can board an abrupt decay to possibly blow up an artifact, or you can bring in chain of vapor for chain of vapor tricks for storm. I also don't think we really want relay. I'm just going to throw that out there. I agree. I think our opponent is playing the faster deck, and I think I would just put both copies of Abrupt Decay into our deck. Blowing up a Bergy or uh, really just Bergy is is um, kind of good and it imprints for black, I guess. Uh, it is. It doesn't change the mana cost of the deck that much to have the Decays in because the Relay is more expensive. Uh, you could decrease by having the Chain of Vapor, but I think Chain of Vapor is pretty much just blank cardboard unless we're using it as a Storm Engine a good percentage of the time. Okay. If I was playing on my own, I probably would have sided in Chain of Vapor, but I don't really have strong opinions. Um, I, I think that this isn't like a super meaningful decision, if I'm being honest, but I could also be wrong. Yeah. Uh, and while this hand would look fine if we were playing our last opponent on control, uh, in this matchup, this hand is way not fast enough. You wouldn't keep this? In this matchup? I'm joking. Yeah, this is obviously an yeah. Logan. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you gotta be wicked fast. Wicked. <laughs> I also like how we kept this hand in game one that looked sort of slow, and on turn two we just made 10 mana and appear. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's the best part of Wish Claw Talisman, is that like you can convert it into mana, or into protection, or into, re or into an action card. It, it just does everything. I think we keep this. We have True One Wish Claw, or we have Ponder... I don't know. We could like mulligan to LED Echo, but this is pretty close. Yep, yeah, I, I think this is fine. Bottom of Veil. Yeah. 
And again, against um, our opponent's deck, it's very possible that our mulligan decisions just don't matter. This is um, true. I think this matchup is very hard to win on the draw. Uh, what? Okay. Oh my. Oh. Um, so we can echo with Wishclaw in play, or we can just echo with two mana available. I think I would echo with the Claw in play. That's where I would be. Um, Underground Seer, Badlands. I th think I would get Badlands. So I guess the, the question is, which land... So let's say we don't win. What land would you rather untap with next turn? I guess if we don't win, then we probably want C, just have access to blue mana to cantrip. Um, yeah. Okay, so... Let's spin the wheel. And at this point, we're looking for... If we opened up four LEDs, we'd be thrilled. Um, That might do it. So that's five. Rit is six. Uh, Wishclaw for Rit is seven. Tendrils is eight. So we'd have to brainstorm into things, right? Um, it's... Uh, or we could brainstorm the... We'd have to brainstorm into initial mana source, put the Tendrils back in the deck, and then we could... Then we might be able to do things. I guess we don't even have four mana anyway, so. Mm, yeah, I think we just have to infuse this brainstorm. Yeah. All right. So we can definitely put back the Taiga, and I think the Abrupt Decay for black actually matters here. Yeah, it um, does. So the question is, what do you put back? We want the Tendrils. So Storm is six, uh, Mox is seven, Rit is eight. Brit is 9, Tendrils is 10. I think you put back Burning Wish. Yeah. Wow, a Burp Decay for black mana. <laughs> Alex is so smart. I don't tell him that enough. Definitely don't tell him that I said that, but wow. Uh, genius. Sorry, my audio cut out for a second. Can you, you hear me again? Uh, I can hear you. Okay, good, 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 good. Hopefully you couldn't hear me. Yeah, yeah, something happened. <laughs> Dark Ritual. And we got it. Turn one against the fastest combo deck in the format, according to one Tony Scaponi. Tony, we appreciate you. How's it going? We miss you. Uh, and it looks like Alex's prediction was correct. This league did end in four and one. Yeah. So how about that? We recovered from our brutal first match where we lost to a mulligan to three uh <laughs> yeah that geez. was a little bit unlucky uh i don't think that our 15th sideboard slot mattered if i'm being honest so if it was a massacre though we could have bought if it was the massacre bad. true although i i if i'm being completely honest massacre is probably out of the four options we listed would be the last one i would put on the board so we listed grape shot we listed pulverize we listed carpet four and then we listed Massacre. Um, mm -hmm. You could also put your favorite meme there. Mizzix Mastery, Diminishing Returns, Ilgain Gains, Telemann Performance. Don't, don't put any of those cards there, please. Uh, Yikes. But yeah, this is our flex spot. Do with it as you will. But uh, a 4-1, <laughs> hard to be upset with that. Yeah, and we beat a bunch of blue decks after you know making our sideboard a little bit worse versus blue. So clearly it's not hurting in the blue department. That's very true. Do you have any final thoughts or whatever, Alex? No, uh, deck is good. Uh, keep playing it. it. Best Storm deck in the format. I would agree with you there. So, Alex, I just want to thank you for joining me here. I do know that you had a pretty busy day traveling back to the West Coast, and I really do appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. Where can people find you if they want that sweet, sweet Alex McKinley content and everything else? Uh, you can find me on Discord, especially in the Storm Discord, um, uh, Vivaris. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Vivaris underscore. And that's about it these days. I guess on this channel, whenever Brian decides to have me on. And the Epic Storm .com. Uh yeah, yeah, so those are all places that you can join. The Discord link is in, in the description below. Just want to point that out. Alex is pretty active in there. And we, our Discord community is really growing. We broke 2K last month, I believe, Alex. You wouldn't know more about that number yep. than I do. Yeah. And uh, 
yeah so it's pretty awesome we have people talking about all different sorts of formats from standard to vintage storm combo all over the place but that's enough of me promoting our discord alex thanks again yeah thanks for having me and thanks everyone for watching take care and keep storming hey brand cook here i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please like and subscribe but also follow the social media channels down below if you want to support this content directly i would recommend going to the epicstorm.com shop and if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.